Hello viewers, Super GT here. You join me at the beginning of a new adventure in the kart racing world. Previously, I've raced a lot in the Club 100 series with moderate success. I then had a fun 1v1 race against Lando Norris himself. The next step of the journey takes us to a first round of the Ultimate Karting Championship. I secured my first major sponsor in Quadrant, who are backing me to compete in a full season of Senior X30 Racing. This was always going to be a tough assignment and one which would certainly be a step up from the racing I'd done before. I was very keen to get stuck in, work on my craft and see how well I could do. The drivers I was up against included national champions. <laughs> I made it. And typically drivers with a lot of experience. I started the season here at Wilton Mill, a track I'm fairly familiar with. There would be many fun and great moments throughout this weekend. But also some I'd rather forget. That's the biggest crash I've ever had, mate. We kicked things off on Saturday morning. By this point, I tested on Friday and perhaps worryingly been slightly off the pace. But I had a few practice sessions remaining before the racing properly began later that day. Hello viewers, Super GT here. How are we doing? You join me for round one of the UKC. So today I've got three practice sessions and two heats. And then tomorrow on Sunday, I've got one more heat and then two finals, which really matter. That's where I get the points, hopefully, if I'm quick enough. The quality of the driver is really, really, really high here. So it's going to be really difficult to get a decent result, but we'll do our best. So right now, we're in the Dan Holland racing uh, team morning. They're looking after me. They're running my cart. That's, in fact, let's go and have a look. Here it is. Here it is. At the Wilton club round I did, um, I was weighing in at 174 kilograms, not just me, with the cart of course, I'm not that big. Um, but we've made a few savings on the cart, we've taken things off that you don't need. It's got down to about 167, 168, so we've saved about 6 kilograms, which is worth maybe a tenth or two. And now it's up to me to uh, you know, burn some of this. Okay, a really good announcement for you. Fanatec have joined the fold. They're going to be sponsoring the season. They're going to be giving away loads of items throughout the course of the year, one for each of the rounds. For this video, you could win an F1 2021 limited edition wheel, which is one of these things here. So stay tuned later in the video to find out how to enter. Okay, so, you know, we had the legendary white helmet for very long. But finally, I can unveil the new one. Shows off, of course, the brand. And uh, yeah, Niren. What does what's that number say, mate? 90, what the hell is that? Okay, here we go then. First practice of Saturday. As we mentioned, we did uh, a fair few practice sessions on the Friday. So these are three day weekends. Uh, so you, you catch us here on the Saturday morning. On Friday, I was well off the pace. I just did, I was just really wasn't at it at all. Uh, but Saturday here is a new day, chance to rectify that. And with these practice sessions, it's really a case of just try to get in the mix with the other drivers and just have a little bit of a battle and just see what's what, see where you're at. So no problem just throwing up the inside there. A little bit later on, uh, Ollie Henwood here in number 17 having a nibble. We're going to give it a go down the inside into Ashby, overcook it slightly into the pack of number 56, Matt Grant. Um, but we got the move done. We got it done. Luke Ellingham comes through, very, very fast guy. And we're going to just try and follow him for a little bit. And then he's going to eventually show us how it's properly done down into the same hairpin without making any contact. So he goes up the inside, gets it done properly and nicely. I'm going to try and copy and emulate such skill by sending it up the inside. It's one of those series where you really just send it, put it on the inside, and then it's, well, it's the other guy's problem then. And uh, surely enough, the session was over quite quickly. We came in. We have to weigh ourselves here. So the weight limit for Senior X30 is 162 kilograms, driver plus the cart. 
and uh, we were weighing in 168 so you see there a couple of kilos over a good 6.3 kilograms over the limit that's hard so that has loads of those better i thought and I think if we try to break a bit later as well then we're going to start bouncing so let's just go like baby steps yeah sure. yeah if we can find like two three temps and go and do tire we're going to be in the 44 so that'll be that'll be nice yeah let's go yeah so we've got brand new tires this one should be a few tenths quicker i uh, just want to break into the 44s which i haven't done yet just to be a bit sharper on the brake at the beginning and then trail off the brakes a bit more into the corner just to really tidy up the middle of the corner. That's where I'm going all over the place. Try and break into the 44s in this session, basically. Got new tires as well. With the new tyres. Okay, here we go. Practice number two. Brand new tyres. Now, this is where I was struggling in Senior X30, getting used to such high levels of grip with, with brand new tyres. You don't have much grip there. You see just pure understeer as you're going out on fresh tyres, but they will warm up. You will get a lot of grip. This is the difficulty I was having uh, driving with much higher levels of grip compared to what I'm used to and it might sound easier to drive a high grip I actually find it harder because you can just go around the corner so quickly and you have to keep the wheel so you have to steer so minimally and actually it's quite a tricky thing to manage especially when you're used to very hard tyres um, Ollie Greenall here number 64 very very quick in fact you know we're up against guys here who race very consistently and towards the front in European series in the British Championship. He's a British champion, uh, does places very well in Europe. So to be on a field with such drivers, you know, is, is, is hard work. Eventually here, um, Derek Morgan came through, another very fast driver. And we just tried to keep up with him, you know, just tried to at least do ourselves some justice. Um, so Derek would typically be, you know, very much towards the front of the pack in a senior x30 grid so just just trying to stick with him learn a thing or two see the amount of grip through there um in club 100 you know you can you can jack the wheel into the corners in this you've got to be a lot smoother it's a completely different style and i'm having to undo my style from sort of 12 years of club 100 and it's quite tricky to do that every little thing you do in these senior x30 carts really matters exactly when you brake, how much you brake at the beginning, how much you brake at the end of the braking zone, how straight the car is when you're braking, exactly when you turn, how much you turn. Honestly, there's so many things that you can do wrong. I took the first two corners here pretty well <laughs> after the chequered flag, but I was getting there. There was some progress at least, and I wasn't getting completely dropped by by Derek there. So it was, it was okay. That was a good session. I didn't quite get the 44, but I did go quicker. Baby steps, baby steps. New, a new tyre run is quite an art. You know, you have to have the confidence in it to push hard early on. So I was uh, quite consistent. Didn't quite get in the 44s, that's what I wanted to do, but. Sean and I reviewed the footage of the practice sessions just to really work out exactly where I was going wrong just to really tidy things up. And hopefully this will just bring me that final little bit of speed going into the first heat. Okay, time for heat number one. Starting 20th, let's, uh, let's go and see what we can do. And with all the practice sessions over, we were into our first race of the UKC. Again, on, um, on fresh tires here, you can see the, the red line there on, on the tire. Everyone on fresh tires. So we had a practice on fresh tires earlier in the day. So we roughly know what they feel like. This guy already spinning out. Very easy to do though, admittedly. Um, you'll see that throughout this video. Lots of people spinning on the on the formation lap. Because you d really don't have much grip to begin with. Especially on fresh tyres. So you really have to get some life into them. Uh, these Red Walled uh, Comet tyres. Pretty notoriously hard to warm up. We're going to do our best to get some life into them before the race starts. So nowhere to hide now. This is our first race. Starting 20th, so we have three heats. You'll start one at the front, one in the middle, one at the back, randomly. And then, uh, yeah, so there's a lot of overtaking to do, you know, a lot of fighting, a lot of people mixed up. A lot of the faster drivers will be at the back, some slower guys at the front. So it's all mixed up in these heats, which makes things very interesting. 
So rolling up towards our first start in the series. Now, the main objective really at the start is just to get really close to the car in front, make sure there's no gaps. Speed builds up. We've got an awkward final corner here. We're just, uh, just trying to keep very close and I don't. And then there's a massive um, Constantino effect and so I, have to, I have to break. Perhaps we should have just gone around him. We are meant to stay in the tram lines. Not that everyone does that. A couple of positions gained on the exit there. So a couple of people go a little bit wide. Coming up into turn one, I was thinking about going deep. But then someone gets loaded. Matt Grad going flying backwards across the screen. And we find ourselves in 14th. We started, we were meant to start 20th. Covering inside, uh, up the inside of Holly Greenwald. Probably the only time I've ever, I'll ever do that. And we go up into 13th. The start here has been good. It's been a good start. We've gained seven positions from our starting from our starting block. Now coming out of uh, out of the infield into the boot. Number 10 getting overtaken. I'm going to send a boot move here, as it's called. As you just nip towards the apex quickly and then cut off the apex, basically, from the car in front. Across the line at the end of lap number one in 12th. Eight positions gained. The starts are certainly not my problem. The problem comes later on in the race when the grip increases. Uh, so Ollie goes through. That's kind of to be expected. And we can just watch him sail off into the distance. Try to learn a thing or two from him. Very, very quick. Very, very tidy. Piers Pryor there in the pink helmet. Ever noticeable with that very distinctive uh, design. He gets lunged and, he, you know, he, he just went off the track. His tyres are going to be pretty shot now for at least half a lap. As soon as you go off the track, as soon as you lose that grip. Someone else uh, off there. As soon as you lose that grip, your tyres are just horrible. And you, it takes a while to get them back. So you really don't want to go offline too much, especially onto the grass. So not quite as tight as I'd like. A bit wide on the exit of turn two. Pierce looks over his shoulder a couple of times. No, uh, I wasn't nowhere near close enough to go for that move. I'm covering for a move uh, behind there, which you couldn't quite see. Down the hill into Ashby. This is where things begin to unravel in this race. As I'm just run a little bit wide and I'm not let back on. You can see, well, you can't, it's hard to see. We'll see in just a moment on the external shot. We get spun around. And we drop all the way down to 20, 20th and then down to 21st. So absolutely not an ideal start. Well, the start was ideal. Lap three, less than. Here's what happened. Uh, so driver behind having a nibble. And then just doesn't really give me any space to try to get back onto the track. Unfortunately, I collect, uh, collect Derek Morgan on the way off the track there. And he had to retire. So a very frustrating moment. We drop down. I still have a fight, you know, there's still some carts here to try to overtake. So it's not like it was a complete lost cause of a race. I send up the inside here of Cameron and move up into 20th. We've got Charlotte Parker ahead to try and just get an overtake done. Try and salvage something from the race. We started 20th, so we're back to where we started, I suppose. So we haven't lost any positions. It's just a bit frustrating because we were up in 12th at one point. Coming through the first corner, then into the second very difficult to get right high speed corner you have to steer so minimally uh, but we do get the move done up the inside into christmas corner and move up into 19. this lap six is an eight minute race plus one lap and by the end i wasn't able to catch up with any of the guys ahead we stayed in 19 at the end of the final lap which is lap 12. so through the final turn that was it that was the end of my first race and it was a, perhaps a uh, welcome to Senior X30 Racing, uh, that was. So uh, we get checked for our nose cone penalty here. Uh, have a look. Are we clean? Yes, we're all good. Don't get a five second penalty. So that was the end of my first ever race in the UKC. That's a shame. That was not really much you could do there. You I was ahead of him, but he's just running me wide. Yeah, well, he was having a nibble up the inside yeah. and stuff, Dan said, and then, you know, he, he ended up just carried pushing on, like, well you around. around. Yeah, so that was our first race. Started 20th. The start was a bit sketchy. It's, yeah, the standard is very high. It's very, very high. Lots of very quick guys out there. Um, it's very savage. It's very, very cutthroat out there. So if you don't go forward, you go backwards a lot damage from our first race have a look I'm just looking at the results the amount of people with penalties is um, it's about 
10 people got the five second penalty for the bumper infringement, actually. So it's just gonna show you, gotta make sure you don't get that five second penalty and you can definitely pick up a few positions for free. Penalties, they follow me everywhere I go. Uh, I get them on Gran Turismo. But also in reality, because on the front nose cone, we have this rule. If you go in too hard into someone, this bracket will uh, come loose and you get a five second penalty. Silver bar here will move into this area. You might be able to see it. Like, that will slide across that way. Okay, those of you who want the free stuff, I know you've skipped the video to get here, but okay. All you've got to do for a chance to win the F1 2021 in limited edition wheel by Fanatec is answer this question. So Jimmy Broadbent and I, we started a kart team last year. What was it called? All you've got to do is comment that along with your Instagram handle or your Twitter handle so I can contact the winner. And then we'll give away that to the winner in about a week's time. So good luck. I have to start charging, see? <laughs> Thank you. No worries. Okay, here we go. Second heat now. So we've had our start towards the back. This is our start towards the front. So sixth place on the grid is where we'll be starting this one. Again, an eight minute race plus one lap. Uh, try and get the tires warm as quickly as possible. And then um, settle into what is going to be a fairly tough race, I would have thought. Because we've got a lot of very fast guys behind. And uh, the one thing we're hoping for is a lot of field spread. So often you can still hold your own, even if you're a bit off the pace towards the front. Because uh, a lot of people start fighting behind. Now, the pole sitter on the left did not get a good launch at all. So he managed to, get, uh, managed to sweep around the outside, immediately go from sixth up into third. The left side of the grid just did not get a good launch at all. Up into towards Christmas corner, we do get overtaken here by Piers Pryor and uh, move down to fourth. But that's okay. Let's just try and tuck in and try to move away from the pack behind and hopefully fighting a fair amount. And uh, this is where you can do the damage early on in the race. Just try and get a big gap. Hope that the guys behind have a bit too much of a fight. And uh, you can open up a fair sizable gap early on. Now already they're beginning to pull away from me. It wasn't quite as tidy through the infield as I'd like. You see they're just a little bit too busy on the wheel. Now coming through the final corner we have a very interesting scenario. As you see the uh, digi flag, it's got the uh, the yellow and black checkered flag, meaning it's basically like a safety car in Formula 1. You have to slow down into single file and then uh, some sort of incident is being cleared up. Now, my restart here was leaving something to be desired. As I was looking round to the right-hand side here and I could still see that flag up on the digi board, I could still see it. But then, as we come round here, they change it to the green at the last second. So I got caught off guard. And um, at least I know for next time not to... <laughs> I should just accelerate it regardless. And then, well, yeah, just, just accelerate anyway. So I'm in fourth. The problem here is that at the end of the first lap, I actually had a, a, an okay gap to the guys behind. But that, uh, that flag brought everyone close together. So the field spread was minimal. They brought everyone, everyone close together and more cots close to, uh, close, closer behind me. Um, so this was going to be a much harder race than, you know, than without that flag. So we're just trying to tuck in, learn as much as we can. It was always going to be tricky and hard, but we'll just do our best. Over the line we go to begin the fourth lap into the first corner. Perhaps just not carrying enough speed. Then a little bit too wide on the exit. As you see the, the cart ahead just gaining already a fair amount up the up the straight uh, overtake coming in there from uh, Derek Morgan try and tuck in behind that's what we're trying to do here very much a learning experience still I'm fairly new to senior x30 the, I think a lot of these guys have been racing x30s pretty much you know a couple of times a month for many years so it's, it's quite tricky you know it's, it's going to always be hard getting lunged left right and center now uh, by this point down into eight this point at 11th but we get double lunged double overtaken and that's, that often happens you, you get overtaken by one another one will follow them through immediately because you've opened the door so down to 13th by lap seven 
and um, speed just quite obviously not there. And of course, when you get overtaken, you just lose a bit more time as well because you're off the, off the line and having to tuck in behind. Um, but we did try and just keep keep um, close to those guys there. Wasn't quite able to do it. And this was really, again, another big, a big uh, warning sign. You know, you, you've got to increase your pace. Otherwise, it's going to be a hard championship. I knew that anyway is going to be tricky, but that, that was especially a tough race. Luckily, we didn't get a penalty. We might be able to gain some positions from other people's penalties, but that was in my second heat. Good start, but not much good after that. Uh, yeah, that was tough, that one. Started really well. Started really well. It was up into third, like, for the first corner. But then I, I just don't have the pace at the moment. Just don't have the speed. I'm still, like, half a second off. I mean, these guys are just really, really quick. They're out every week. And they've been doing X30s for a long time. And I'm, you know, still getting used to it. So I dropped back. I, I don't know where I was, like, 40. I just thought, right, just drive my own race and try and learn a thing or two. So that's day one, complete. Day one. Um, okay results, we'll try and go better tomorrow, then we'll have the finals where we actually score the points. Still learning, let's go again tomorrow and see what we can do. Yeah, no Chelsea fans in here, get out. He ain't a Chelsea <laughs> fan, he just has tops. Oh, that's kind of my signature. That's where all my pundits are there. Right, now go buy an Arsenal shirt. Now yesterday was one of the hottest days I've ever raced. It was it was scorching, scorching 23 degrees. But if you look behind me, you might see a very black, ominous cloud. And just looking at my high-tech Google weather radar, it looks like we have a fair chance of rain, which is a good thing for me because the less grip, the better, basically. We got some rain. We got some rain. Oh, I got the MW. Oh, it goes rum, rum, rum. So I did my rain dance and the rain did come down. As you can see by these puddles, we're looking at the sessions before. You can see the spray. The track is very different on the Sunday than it was on the Saturday. We did a little bit of, um, of recon with Sean, just working out the lines that we should be taking, just to go over that and just make sure I know what I was doing. And we bolted on the wet tyres. But the more we watched these sessions before us, the more we realized actually this track dries out very quickly. And as you can see, some people changed back to the slick tires. We held off putting our cart down just in case we wanted to change back onto slicks. But eventually you see here on the grid, everyone was sat ready for the race on wets. But suddenly there was a big panic as the race organizers basically said, okay, everyone, it is dry now. Just everyone's allowed to change back onto slick tires. This angry man began shouting at all of us, telling us what the deal was. And we didn't have much time to change the tyres over. So we had to be very quick about it. Now, you see number 88 behind me. He actually gambled on slicks. You see his car still on the ground. He's not bothering to change anything. He gambled on on, on the slick tyres. So he's probably quite annoyed that everyone was able to change over to the, over to the slick tyres. Uh, so he probably would have walked that race quite easily. Even I had to get involved with uh, changing the tyres. And it wasn't just the tyres either. We had to change... Um, they, eventually, they allowed us to change the whole setup of the cart. So the spacers, the tracking. There's lots of little different things you can change to make it suitable for slick compared to the wets. But eventually, we got it done in time. We got the cart back down and we were ready to race. So here it was. Heat number three. It's a different day. Different day, different conditions. And we were going out relatively into the unknown. We knew that it was somewhat dry at least because the rain was at least about half an hour before this. There wasn't very much grip. So even though it was dry, it was the, the track wasn't particularly grippy. So this was good for me. As you can see there, another guy binning it on the, on the wall like that. Um, so the rain was still good news for me. Let's go into turn one. I mean, this was a very messy start. As you can see, cart's not really in formation. We come into turn one, into turn two, and I d there's just no grip. You see that a touch of damp patch almost fall off the edge of that curb. But thankfully for me, that start didn't count. We have the full start flag. We go around again. We can try and do it properly. Starting, I think it was 10th on this one. So this time, a much cleaner start. You see they're slightly better into, for into formation. Into turn one. Now, a couple of cars go wide onto that damp patch. You see they gain three positions. So into ninth, 
immediately down to 12th, but then back up to 9th. Around the outside of Christmas Corner, boom, a double move, a double outside move. And that was one I wanted to do all weekend. I wanted to do an outside at Christmas Corner. And we don't only do one, we do two. Up into 7th. Another cut spinning off. That's Matt Grant there on the right. Moving up to 6th. And we're going to send up the inside here. And then we get, actually gain two positions up into 4th. So start at 10th, down to 12th, back up into 4th, and you see the big moment. So this, these conditions were very, very tricky because it was, for 99% of the track, it was dry. But then there were just damp patches dotted about. And if you touch them, it really, really was very, very dangerous. As you see there, Lewis uh, uh, drifting wide. He must have just touched the, touched the damp patch. You lose a lot of speed. There's basically no grip on the uh, slick tyre. As soon as you touch any sort of moisture, that's it. Zero grip. Uh, grip is uh, going to uh, leave the chat, basically. So we find ourselves in third position. This is pretty miraculous by my standards. We're coming across the line to begin the third lap. We do get a poor launch off that final corner. Derek Morgan goes through. That's okay. We can try and keep with him the best we can. He points forward, basically saying, come on, let's go. Let's try and catch up with the guy's head. Fair enough. You know, I'm not... I'm not one to argue with that. I'm going to try and keep up with you the best I can. Bit of a problem corner for me there. As um, we get overtaken. And that section of the track I was definitely struggled, struggling with. And I'd say that one of the hardest things about this track, Wilton Mill, is the bumps. It's a very bumpy track. So people are opting for different lines, as you can see, through that section of the circuit. And uh, we find ourselves in fifth place at this point. Not too bad. Still got a fair amount of the race left to go. As we come through the final corner, we're not getting completely dropped. Yes, those carts aren't right in front of me, but they're definitely not as fast as they were. Or oh, sorry, the gap isn't as big as it probably would have been in the previous race. But this is where things really began to unravel. This is where I had probably the biggest moment of my karting career. And it just shows you where small mistakes lead to very big consequences. So I've gone into the wall pretty much at full speed and I'm um, sat there dazed in uh, confusion. I can't really process exactly what the hell just happened. I do manage to climb back into the seat and continue. I wasn't sure if the cart was completely damaged, but all I knew that I was at least a bit damaged. So I brought the cart in just to get it checked over, just to see exactly what had happened there. Because I didn't feel good at all. Yes, Grant. So here's what happened. Coming, flying into turn one, into turn two at full speed, boom, hit the damp patch, and my body hit sort of positions it really shouldn't have done there. And uh, we just go for a spot of brake dancing halfway for a kart race. Now you can see the line that number 23 has taken, right wheels up on the curb. That's where I probably should have been just to be safe. I've just touched the damp patch basically, and as soon as you're on it, you've just got no grip. You can't fight it. By this point, I'm bracing for impact. Bam, hit the wall. I actually hit my head on the barrier. And then I'm parallel with the circuit at this point. Spine reaching all sorts of dimensions it shouldn't be reaching. And then I'm just dazed and confused. Okay, honestly. <laughs> that was fucking savage, that was. You're That's right. the biggest crash I've ever had. Mate, did you record it? Yeah. <laughs> oh my God, man. Pleased with how I did, it's just one little mistake and massive consequences. Yeah, man. Oh. Yeah, Can you see it on camera? Yeah. This is the corner mainly. Yeah. I mean, your hub's hanging off. Yeah, we know that. I'm off it, yeah. I kind of went down a little bit more. No, I just caught the uh, water. Oh, right, yeah. There's, there's like one dry line, and I just, I just touch it like that, and it's yeah. like, no, 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 back. Yeah. Oh my god, right, let's go medical centre, get checked over. Impression, we all know. Do you mind if you have a picture of yeah. it? How are you doing? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, I appreciate that. And then just follow this video. Hello, hello. Uh, no. <laughs> 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 Alright. Ooh, ow. 
Trust me, I've got special alcohol ones for people I don't like. They really, <laughs> really stink. Just got patched up. It wasn't too bad. I just, my leg just hurts a little bit. One light equals one heel for my leg. And then let's go to the final and see what we can do. <laughs> yeah, I could do some food. Yeah. All right, been checked over. I'm all clear, we're all good. Time for the finals. This is where we score the points. This is where it really matters. Starting 19th out of 24. So not great, but we can try and move forward from there and just have a good race. Castle right, it was damaged, but we've got it all sorted. So, so let's go, let's go and do, let's go and do our first final in the UKC. Okay, time for our first final. So we've had our three heats. Obviously not great results in the heats and that's put us towards the back of the grid. And um, we've got a lot of work to do. Starting 19 out of 24. But this is where you can have a lot of fun because you're, you're surrounded by the people you should be. It's not mixed up in, in the final, the grid. Let's start, let's go. Let's just see what we can do, have a bit of fun. There was a cart already off on the right hand side. The track has dried by this point. So we don't have to worry about the tamp patches anymore. Around the outside of Ollie Henwood, it goes a little bit casual on the inside. There's a big crash there. And we're around the outside of two more. I've been to 14, started 90. And we've gained five already. So I think it's quite clear to me at least, that the starts aren't the problem. I'm typically always moving forward at the start. The positioning, the racecraft is, is, is okay on lap one. It's just as the race goes on, it becomes a little bit tricky. There's already quite a bit of a golf in class as you can see with myself and the carts up in front so it's maybe about a second gap already let's hope they start fighting and maybe we can start cashing them back up as we cross the line at the end of lap one the race is a bit longer this time it's a, a 10 minute race plus one lap and on this occasion that happened to be 15 laps by lap four coming into the boot we do get overtaken and when you get an overtaken into the boot it just shows you you're probably quite slow on the preceding corner but that's okay we, we just try and keep up with him and perhaps go for a, a move back on him later yellow flag into turn one it's gone off on around here can't quite see anything but we continue up the hill into christmas corner for the fifth time dropping down through this section and actually this section wasn't my best part of the track very very bumpy which the camera doesn't do exact justice to i must say it's a lot worse, a lot more violent than what the GoPro stabilisation makes it look out to be. Uh, make out to be. So not actually getting dropped here by um, number 49. So we can actually have a decent race here. And that's the good thing about the pre-finals. That, as I said, you're kind of mixed in around about the ability area that you should be. And therefore, you can have a bit of a closer, better race. This is, this is good so far. I mean, that group up in front, it's not a million miles away. And if they just start fighting a little bit, there's always a chance of still picking up a couple of positions. And the frustrating thing is, is that we're only really just a tenth or two away from being solidly in the midfield. It really isn't a million miles away. It's just tidying up, tidying up a couple of corners. And then we're there. And we managed to rebuff this sort of half-hearted overtake attempt. He does eventually go through, though. And in many ways, in these races, it's all about momentum. If you start losing momentum and start going backwards through the pack, people sniff blood and they sense weakness and then you just get overtaken again. So you really do have to hold your own, you know, be, be forthright with your positioning because as soon as you lose one, there's a very good chance you'll lose another. And that's exactly what's happened here. Didn't quite have the speed. Lose one, lose two. But we're gonna try and keep up here with Ollie Henwood in 18th so we're still ahead of where we started still ahead of where we started which is not too bad of a thing let's just try and uh, make our way uh, up up the order if we can and just try to gain back this position i did uh, have a look ahead at the carts in front there is a big group maybe three four seconds ahead and again we're just sensing that potentially we could gain a position or two from those if they start fighting a little bit too much now this is matt grant interesting that we used to actually race for the same university it was a good sort of seven eight years ago maybe actually more than that 
So it was good to race someone I was familiar with, race someone I know, uh, hadn't seen him in a long time. So by this point, I was just really actually just enjoying it and just having a race, a good battle with a good friend, someone I knew from a long time ago. Another factor that was coming in by this point of the race and this point of the weekend was fatigue. Let's not forget that this is the third day of Senior X30 racing and these carts are pretty savage. And um, I'd never done three days of karting before in my life, let alone in this type of cart around Wilton Mill, which is probably one of the most physical circuits in the country. So by this point, exhaustion, tiredness was really beginning to creep in. I really wanted to try to line Matt up for a boot move and try to get past him here on the final lap. But then just as I do that, the cart is just rejoining the apex and I couldn't quite chuck up the inside. But we do gain two positions. There are two carts there in a, in a collision. So we finished 17th and that was the end of our first final in the UK six. First final, first final. I've just run the numbers and the numbers say I was too slow. So I was gaining at the start, but then like, the longer the races are, you know, the worse I get as the race goes on, as the grip gets good. It's, it's this long left in the middle, in the infield. If there's one corner that I'm getting consistently wrong, it's, it's that one. Because when you're, you're, you're turning and braking and it's really unsettling the car, so I'm just having to adapt my line the way I take that corner. Yeah, it's good fun. But it's hard work. You've been sent a uh, video message. Oh. Hello, Quadrant members. Um, I just thought I'd send a little get well seen message to our main man, Steve Alvarez Brown, who was involved in a huge, <laughs> huge shunt at Wilson Mill today. Um, We've heard he's grown an extra couple centimetres, which hasn't done him any harm at all. But uh, yeah, hope you're well, Steve. Um, get well soon. I'm sure you'll be out in a go-kart um, trying to stay out of last place again soon. Right? Good job. Let's see you soon. Cheers, Lando. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, here we go. Our first main final so the last race was actually a pre-final this one is worth the most amount of points but to be honest i just wanted to go out there and just really enjoy it just have fun not worry about the result too much but just just do our best and not think about it too much i think sometimes you can overstress yourself and actually it's probably you're probably worse off that way we actually had another sprinkling of rain you can see the track was a little bit slippery again this is good news for me because I just wanted less grip. I wanted as little grip as possible. Now, unfortunately, there was this weird moment here, very, very frustrating moment, where we were trying to warm up our tyres. We had two laps to do it. And Carly Atkins in number five just makes a mistake, spins, and I go into the side of him. Very frustrating moment. And ugh, it's just so silly, so innocuous. And I knew immediately, you see my hands raised there, I knew immediately I had a five second penalty because of the drop down, drop nose penalty. So by this point I thought, you know what, okay, like I've got a penalty already. I know it's, it's so silly to get one before the race even starts, but I thought, okay, let's just go and just, just forget about the penalty. Let's just have a fun race. See what we can do in these uh, tricky conditions. Just try to keep it nice and narrow on the inside there. Uh, Ollie on our, on our left hand side, up into 15th. So we've gained a few already going to cover narrow go the insides and just protect our position that way not as many crashes here try and nip up the inside here does it quite work not really dropping down the hill again protect narrow cover our inside and then coming through the infield here looks like uh, lewis they're just drifting a little bit wide and that just shows you what happens when you just don't have the grip and then this corner again very tricky to get dead right i was fairly determined to try to do it a better job of it 
because that is exactly what Sean was saying. He, should, he was just saying you need to improve that corner. If there's one corner on the track, you do need to get better. It is that one. Casper uh, here, number seven, having a nibble up the inside of the car in front. Doesn't quite work out for him. So at the end of lap one, sitting in 14th, and, you know, the, the typical trend continues of just having a good start. I gained five positions from my starting position on this start. Um, so the starts, again, just absolutely not the problem. I'm fairly happy starting. I, I do like the race starts. Enjoy them. I uh, just need to improve my pace a little bit further down the race. Uh, so a fairly big group here. Look at this. Uh, it's all kicking off. And then up in up the inside, number 55 into number 5. And then boom. They're doing the Mambo number 5 on the grass. Down into... Well, I don't know where they went to. I'm up into 12. So. And you can hear at this point, my exhaust came slightly loose. And I was a bit worried by that. I didn't. First off, I didn't know if it was me or the cart behind. Sometimes it's quite hard to tell. But um, ooh, a little bit wide there on, on that patch. Luckily, not go flying into the barrier. It was actually quite a, a weird sensation knowing that I'm on a damp track going through corners that I've gone flying off barely hours before. I find myself here in 13th with a loud exhaust pipe. I'm just going to continue. The cart performance doesn't feel off. I, I, I don't think this loud exhaust is affecting my cart performance, so it's okay. Ollie up the inside there, so I'm down into 14th. We had a good rivalry with, uh, with Ollie actually. I had some really good races with him throughout the weekend. Um, this race here, 14 minutes plus one lap. Turned out to be 18 laps on this occasion, so it's a fairly lengthy race. And going in, I was very worried about my fatigue, given that I was already getting tired in the pre-final. Um, number 104 comes flying in there with quite an... Uh, robust move to put, it, to, put it, to put it bluntly and we lose three positions um so the momentum not quite with us at this point but just looking at this battle in front i mean look at this it's a one two three four about eight nine carts of us here and there's two behind me as well so probably 10 carts here fighting for position is pretty pretty intense we go three abreast down the main straight matt uh matt grant getting uh, the better of all of us but we do gain one position, actually, out of all of that. Am I close enough to go for a move? Probably was, but I didn't didn't actually go for it. We're going to just try to just try and tuck in here. Not do anything too stupid too soon. Still only a third of the way into the race. Number 10 having a, having a move. Doesn't quite work out for him. And we luckily managed to rejoin the track. They're sitting here in 16th position. Quite a lot of carts just in front. Which is This is a good sign. We're getting closer to that midfield. We're getting closer to that midfield. We are going a bit better here. Because in the previous races, the midfield were just driving away. Close enough here to go for the move. We send it up the inside. And move back up into 15th. So actually, looking at this, the top 10 actually is well within sight. I'm not saying I'm going to get it here. But the fact that we're this close, the fact that we're a lot closer than we were in previous races, shows at least some sort of sign of progression. And through that corner... A little bit of oversteer, but get, getting it a little bit better than I was earlier in the day. At this point, we get overtaken by a recovering Carly Atkins, who's normally a lot closer towards the front. Um, and at this point here, my camera decided it didn't really want to function as a camera anymore. So we, we are going with the uh, ever great footage from uh, Matt Amos, uh, the panoramic shots. And I found myself in a really nice little battle here with Ollie and Matt. We're just going to try and maybe gain one more position. I'm definitely in with a shout here. As we come through turn one, through turn two, three laps left to go. We're on lap 16 of 18. Down the back straight. Am I close enough? Not quite. Not quite. Maybe I could have done an absolutely almighty lunge. But through the exit of this corner, this shows that I was getting this corner a lot better. The long left on the infield. Because I sent up the inside into the boot. And earlier on the, in the day... It was everyone else overtaking me there. And finally, I sorted out the preceding corner. So much so that I managed to actually do an overtake into the following corner. So that's good news. Up into 14th by this point and actually dropping them slightly. Matt goes for the move, as you can see, just behind. And that opens up the gap slightly. That gave me just a little bit of breathing room with only one and a half laps left to go. 
So we find ourselves in a decent position. And uh, I mean, if you if you call 14th a decent position, but I do, given that, you know, this is my first race, pro proper race in Senior X13, a national championship, lots of really good drivers. It's, it was always going to be hard to get a good result. So you know what? 14th on the final lap, not too shabby. The cars in front really weren't that far away. So if I could just get one or two cents quicker, the top 10 would have been possible there. And that's really not too bad at all. That's really not bad at all. But that was the end of our first final in the UKC, and I really enjoyed it. Yeah, it was good fun. That was the main thing, you know. That was good effort. The exhaust it? came oh, loose. I know, yeah. The, the I, could, I wondered cracked. about that. I was yeah. like, is this the guy behind me? Or is it me? <laughs> Wait, no, no, it's me. It's me. <laughs> uh, Drop down on the warm up that. Yeah, did you spin or? Did you no, the guy in front was right there, and I was oh. like straight into him. Nothing like. <laughs> I should have just gone on the grass, but. No, good effort. Like, we were really competitive there. And actually, that long left there, you made a big, big yeah, effort and changed a, it completely. Was a lot tighter. You weren't you losing anything then. And also, you actually made a few overtakes into the boot. Yeah. So that was much, much, much better. Yeah. You know, you, you probably gained two tenths of lap time just from that just one corner. That corner yeah. yeah, you know. Yeah, it felt a lot better. It felt a lot better. Happy with it. I mean, it's not the greatest result, but it's a good field, you know, so. Yeah, it's just like, just want to have a solid, consistent race, make some moves, and that's what I did, you know, just a couple of overtakes, nice one into the boot, overtook some people. I think other people were struggling with fitness, and I felt better in that one than I did the other one, so. It was, it was Matt's, yeah, Matt's uh, motivational speech, absolutely amazing. These nuts, here on the tools. Subscribe to Matt Amos. All right, there we go, the end of round number one. I am absolutely exhausted, three days of racing, very hardcore, but, it was amazing fun, amazing fun, especially that last race, really enjoyed that. The results were, you know, not great, but it is a really good field. So, a lot of learning to do. It was never gonna be easy. Hopefully, over the course of the six rounds, we'll progress, we'll get quicker, we'll get towards the front. Um, but, I loved it, it was really good fun. Really enjoyed it. Great people here at the track. Met a lot of people, met a lot of you, uh, you know, talked to you over the weekend, really enjoyed it. And of course, don't forget about the Fanatec giveaway. Thank you for Fanatec, of course, for, for joining the fold, for sponsoring me, alongside, of course, Quadrant. I've got to thank the sponsors, be very, very polite to them. So thank you to Fanatec for giving away the F1 wheel. But that's it. That's it for this first one. Really enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed the video. You probably did because you're still here. Drop a like, all the all that, all that nonsense, subscribe, you know, you know the deal by now, and have a good day, I'll catch you soon, goodbye.